Bay welcome for Mr. Charles Martinet. Make people have a sense of like, oh boy, that's fun, you know? And then I, I get to work with wonderful people at Nintendo and the various places that I work. And then I get to come around the world and, and meet wonderful people like you. So, thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you. Honestly, it's what I really wish for everybody is that you find what you love to do, whether that's being a voice actor or a director or a, 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 a garbage collector or what, whatever it is. Find what you love to do. Find your heart's calling, your, your, what, what gives you joy and you happiness. Because I absolutely believe in life. When you're pursuing your happiness, when you're pursuing your love, your joy, your sense of fun, then it, it just, the universe has just a wonderful way of making sure that you find that fun. You know, and it may not look exactly like you think it's gonna look. It, it, you know, David Tennant is the only person I've ever met in my life who, when he saw Dr. Lou at the age of five, he said, I want to be him when I grow up. And, and he became that, you know? The rest of us, I was gonna be a lawyer. I, you know, I was at UC Berkeley, I was convinced that I'd be working at the State Department in London or Paris or Rome, uh, or Barcelona, and, and, and doing State Department work as a lawyer, and you know, da 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 da, -da. And then, I, you know, I just, I, 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 my life went exactly the opposite way, through no control of my own, but, but I knew that I wanted to be happy. My dad was really happy when he was running a lab, making inventions uh, for Kaiser refractories, but what happens inside a blast furnace at, 5,350 degrees to a certain metal alloy or a certain mold alloy and then changing the chemical composition of the alloy so they can be reused and do that. Like stuff that is not even close to my brain power, you know. I can say, woohoo, but I can't, you know. I know, like, chemistry is like, I, this is me in chemistry class. I, you know, I just wasn't good at it. But, you know, I still wanted to force myself into being a lawyer because my friends we're all becoming lawyers, and it was like a, a noble career of power and joy, and da, 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 da. you know, and then, you know, it just didn't, it just, I, I couldn't get the classes that I wanted from this one amazing professor who, who I was studying political science with a theory emphasis. And I thought that's a perfect prelude to law because it's philosophy, it's thought, it's belief systems, and, and his, his philosophy was everybody has a version of the nature of man. 
like a Hobbesian version where, you know, man is, is kind of mean and rotten and has to be controlled and life and, and, and nature is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, or Lockean, or, you know, where it's like, no, men are good, and, you know, that life is good, and everything's good, but then the country, the state, makes things bad, you know, and the, or the social contract, it was so fascinating to me, you know, going all the way back to Aristotle and Socrates, and all the way into the current, and he was the only professor that ever said, and his, his exam was two, a, well, one A and B. One A, what is the nature of man according to Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, blah, blah, blah. And, and then one B, what do you think is the nature of man? And it was the only time in my life that I was ever asked to think in school. And I'm like, wow, this is great. I'll just blow through the first half and then spend this, you know, the next two and a half hours on, on what I think. And, and I love that and I decided that's the guy I'm going to do a thesis with. This is my line of study. This is where I'm going to, you know, do graduate work. And, and I couldn't get into his classes. So, like a typical academe, or not, I said, like a brat, okay, if I can't take his classes, I'm leaving. And I left, and lucky for me, I had a, a wonderful friend uh, who said, come and take an acting class from me. And I said, oh, come on, Les, there is absolutely no way I could ever stand in front of people. I, I was the type of guy when I was like a, a young man, I was so shy that in a room like this, if there were two people, I could be invisible, you know? Because I just was terribly shy. And he got me into this acting class because he said, well, why don't you come and we'll have lunch every day at the student cafeteria where they're training chefs. And I said, lunch? <laughs> well, I could go for that. I said, but I don't want to do monologues. I don't want to lose either. Oh, don't worry, learn the monologues and we'll just see what happens when you get there. And I had perfect deceit from a wonderful friend because I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just go and then, and then we get these monologues. And I'm like, oh, I'll just study it, but I'll just, oh, what's that for lunch? And, you know, and then, and then uh, sure enough, we do our first monologue, which is a Spoon River anthology where everybody in the play is dead and does their monologue. It's, you know, and uh, you know, and, and, and my, I had my, my monologue, I said, my name is Joe. I died a terrible death in the fire and the raised in the warehouse. And, you know, and I'm like, oh, I see, I learned, I learned my mind log. And, and, you know, they went through everybody, you know, and I was invisible in the back of the room until Les said, well, that's everybody else. Charles, you're up. And I thought, oh my gosh. I was so terrified. And I'm walking up, like, I walk up there. And, you know, there was no microphone, but if I had them, it would have been going like this. Because that's what my foot was doing. And I'm like, you know, my name is Joe. I died a terrible... Oh, what's the wrong with my foot? And I put my weight on that foot, and then that foot starts going like this. And I put the weight on that foot, and the middle foot, and then they're both going like this. And I'm convinced that the audience is hearing... <laughs> but you're, I was actually saying the monologue, and I didn't know it. And I got to the end of the monologue, and you know, everybody goes, yay. You know, as, as you do when you're a young actor, yay. And, and my, the criticism of me, and I, my, because my subtext was, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to make it to the end of this speech. Help! You know, and I got the, and, and the criticism was, well, you're the only person who wasn't nervous. How'd you do that? <laughs> and, I, and I was literally like, what? You know? And, and, and sure enough, I didn't appear nervous, but I was terrified, and I thought, well, this acting thing isn't as bad as I thought, you know? <laughs> and then I started doing acting, doing acting, doing acting, and then I auditioned for a school play, Midsummer Night's Dream, where I wanted to play Oberon, the King of the Fairy. Lie there lies Titania some time of the night, you know? Fetch me a, you know? And I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna do this. And I, and I, I go, and I go, and I go, and I, I do my audition, there lies Titania, you know? And I, you know, college, so you watch everybody else, I watched everybody else do their audition, I went, I'm number one, I'm number one. I had called Les, I said, hey Les, I think I'm gonna get this part. I was really good, I, and I watched everybody, and I went, and he said, well, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And I'm like, no, no, I'm pretty sure I got this. Because it was really, 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 I really, really, I watched everybody. And sure enough, I got absolutely nothing. Not only, I wasn't a king of the fairy, I wasn't a fairy, I wasn't a, a piece of fairy dust. I got bupkis. And I thought, they, that, that was the biggest failure of my life to that point, you know? And I, that is what lit the fire underneath me. So I just want to say from my personal experience, when you feel your life is at its worst and you failed miserably, 
that's why, you know, the darkest hour is just before dawn. You know, and if you're at dawn, you know, uh, it's coldest right then too, but then the world heats up. And so life does have a series of, of ups and downs. And it, it always amazes me because, you know, if you read the newspapers and you look at our world and the way we think, there's just a natural thing of like, uh, of a certain level of like, uh, not trusting the world and not trusting that we're all the same and believing the, the, the idea that we're different. And, and you know, what I do in life is I travel. I love travel and I talk to people. I love people. I talk to everybody. And, and the one thing that I've learned is that we're really alike. You know, every one of us has the same hopes and dreams and loves and, and considerations. And, you know, we may be different color skin, maybe different religions, maybe different anything else, but the tears of a mother are the same everywhere. They may sound different, but they're not, you know, they really aren't, and languages sound different, but the communication is always from the heart, and it's just that we as, as humanity haven't quite learned that yet. And so here we are in an age in an, where we have a wonderful opportunity to, to embrace each other as human beings, to grow and to learn to love, and to learn to be colorblind and to learn to be religion blind or whatever it is, but rather to, to see more precisely the beauty of our humanity because, you know, I'm sure if there's an alien out there, he's amazed at, at how much people can love. And that's, I think that's the most amazing thing to me is how beautiful humanity can love. And so my wish also for everyone is to find that love in yourself. Because we all, you know, part of that distinction of like, oh, those people are over there, those, they, is because we're all afraid. We're all afraid, of, you know, and, and the voice that we speak to ourselves in is so often so cruel and so mean and so heartless, you know. It's a voice that we learn in our childhood and, and in our adolescence to take on that voice of the most critical part of ourselves and, and to do that. But sometimes you have to fall in love with yourself first and realize you can quiet that negative voice and become the, the best friend you've ever had, you know? Children are great at loving and great at just being themselves and then we lose a little bit, but we can all gain that back and that's what I seek to do with my characters is to always find the innocence, to always find the joy and to never be harmful in them. So that's just, I mean, yeah, that's a little bit of a rundown of, of, of me. But really, you know, if you want to be an actor, it's a great thing because you get to, every character has to be real. So you have to study what it is inside that character. What are they looking for? And it's always love, but they don't know how to get it. And so they do it by being evil or whatever it is, you know? So that's what they do. That's who they become. But they're still inside pretty good. They still want love, they still know how to get it. So that's what I do is, in my characters. I always play with that. I always play with like, like you know, Waluigi. Hey, everybody cheat with me, man. Oh, you know, don't you get me. And then he can cheat because he feels sorry for himself that other people are cheating, even though they're not he is. But that's his way, you know. And Wario's way is, oh, I'm up today. Yeah, oh, you know, here's another, oh, I always fall by myself. You know, all those things. They're all his way. So, you know, of course, to me, my, my favorite character, Mario, is so full of love and so full of joy and so full of happiness that it just makes me so happy to find that place in myself where I, I find sheer joy, sheer happiness. And, and to put that in, out there into a, a, the, my work is such an honor. It's such a joy, as is your, your enjoyment of the game. To me, that, that gives me a, a great sense of joy and a great sense of responsibility to do it with the, the absolute purity that I can. So, once again, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And I do want to make sure that I open things up for questions because I'll keep talking forever. And there's a question right there. Hello. How are you? Oh, she's right here the microphone. Come on up to the microphone, and we'll just take turns on and then the microphone. Hi. Uh, hi, I was wondering what was your favorite, what 
What is your favorite character to voice? My favorite character to voice. That's a great question. It's, it's Super Mario. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, but I I love Luigi too because I'm I was the second born and I'm also more like <laughs> Luigi than Mario. I'm much more trepidatious and fearful of like you know ah, you know my brother was the type of guy you know if he if he was inside and wanted to go outside he he just went even if there was a plate glass window in the way. You know, and I was like, I don't know, what should we go outside? I don't know, ah, you know. So, uh, but I love, I love, I love all the characters. But Mario is like, woohoo! Thank you for that. But who's your favorite? Um, I like Yoshi. Yoshi! <laughs> He's great. Isn't it amazing what a great driver he is? A lot of people feel. <laughs> A lot of people feel like I, who, a Yoshi cannot possibly drive a Mario Kart, but I find his carts always seem to go faster and control better than mine. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Hello! How are you? Oh, thank you for doing that. Thank you. Hi. Um, how many Mario games have you played? How many Mario games have I done? That is a great question. And you know, I can just now tell you because somebody from Guinness Book of World Records uh, contacted me and said, congratulations, you've done 95 games. I've done 95 Mario games. And of course, there are more to come, so whoopee! <laughs> What's your favorite one? Thank you. Mario Kart, number one. I love Mario Kart 8. I try to tell everybody when I go to a city like New York or Los Angeles where the traffic is always terrible, don't drive a car. Hop in a Mario Kart. Like, you know, anti-gravity, right? And then you fly into town over everybody, over the Holland Tunnel, and then you come down, you park, put the game on, you know, on pause, and then you're there. Whoopee! Thank you very much. Hi. Hey, I'm your biggest fan, Cal Minkus. Thank you, Cal. Thank you I have much. two questions. Sure. Um, one, uh, it's about Super, the first question is about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh boy. Um, is there a possibility that Gino from the Super Mario RPG game could get in? Well, you know, that's a great question. I'm a voiceover actor, so I have the unique privilege of knowing absolutely nothing. <laughs> that's, a, that's the greatest thing. But when I get a phone call or a text that says, come and play in our sandbox next Wednesday, then I get there and I go, yippee! <laughs> What's the other question? My other question is, um, what do you think about the Super Mario plush adventures that people make on YouTube? Because I make them too. <laughs> the Super Mario plush? Yeah. I think Super Mario, but I happen to have five or six of them. I have five or six Yoshis. I have a green Yoshi, a purple Yoshi, a red Yoshi. I have a polka dot Yoshi, I have a rainbow Yoshi. I have a Princess Peach. I have Bowser, which I think honestly, that's the best plushie I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how they make a little pokey turtle shell, but it, it, it's, it's amazing. So, and I do have also, I have Toad. <laughs> yeah. Of course I have, of course I have, like and as soon Luigi. As yeah, thank you. Thank you, you very much. Who's should... your favorite, yeah, who's your favorite plush toy? My favorite plush toy? <laughs> Where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much, I own a lot of Mario plush toys. Yeah. And my favorite ones that I currently own are Mario, Yoshi, and Bowser. Mario, Yoshi, Bowser. Yippee! <laughs> thank you. Great questions. Hi! Wow, my favorite Mario game that I've ever had the voice for. I have had so much fun. And at 95 games, it's like, well, I, you know, Mario 64 has a certain level of joy. Because, you know, this how I got the job of Mario, I usually start with that. But let me tell you, I was an actor. I did 10 years of theater. I did a training in London. I came back, and I, I was sitting there one day, and a friend that said, hey, you want to audition for a corporate video? And I said, What's a corporate video? It's a video that's corporate. What do I have to do? You have to act. Okay. So I did like 600 corporate videos. And then, you know, one day I was doing a commercial and, and, and somebody said, you know, cut, great, you do voiceover? I said, sure. <laughs> Not having a clue what it meant. And he said, great, here's the copy. Orchard Supply Hotware, the right item at the right price, right now. Great, here's more money. Yippee, I'm a voice actor, you know. 
So one thing has led to another, and I'm sitting there, you know, doing what actors do, sitting on the beach reading a book, you know, while waiting for the sun to set, and a friend of mine calls me up, or it pages me, and I says, you gotta go audition for this, this job in, for Las Vegas. It's a real-time animation thing or something like that, but I'm gonna be doing some stuff, you should go. And I said, there is no way I would ever crash an audition. I am an actor, where should I go? <laughs> And I did, I got off the beach, I drove over and I, I, I pulled into the, I found a parking space, which is a miracle in itself. I'm walking in the door, as he's walking out the door with the cameraman behind him, and I said, hi, can I read for this thing in Las Vegas? Having no idea what it was. And the guy looks at me and goes, oh gosh. Oh, wow, all right, all right, we'll set the camera up. You're an Italian plumber from Brooklyn named Mario for this thing called Nintendo, and you're gonna have these things glued to your face, and you're gonna talk as this cartoon character, but everybody else is gonna see and hear through secret cameras, in, you know, only the character, but you'll hear and see them through the hidden camera and microphone. So make up a voice, make up a video game, make up anything you want. I'm not gonna pay you to, to drink coffee all day, because we have no idea if it's gonna work or not, but whenever you run out of things to say, that's your audition. And I'm thinking to myself, self? Italian plumber from Brooklyn. Get out of my face, I'm working here. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do something like that because I have this principle, never be hurtful, and that would bother children, I think. So I'm gonna not do that. I'm gonna do something more nice, more kind, more pleasant. You know, I didn't, I had then grab me and take me the shoe. I see Italian guy, go play, uh, make that younger, and then just make up a video. I don't know anything about video games, except, you know, wacka 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 you know, and bong bong, which is the sound I heard the most, and I, I go, I'll just make something up, what should I do? Oh yeah, make something up about food, since that's a theme in my life, and, and, and you know, and I'm sitting thinking, well, what will I make up about food? I don't know what I'm gonna make about food. What are you gonna make about about food? I don't know, but I'm getting hungry thinking about food. I mean, too, let's go eat something about food. Okay, I hear action, I'm like, Hello, I'm Mario. Let's make a pizza pie together. And I started making pizzas, and then I chase you with a pizza. I catch you with a pizza. You make a pizza, chase me with a pizza. And then when you catch me with a pizza, then I eat the pizza. Yippee! <laughs> and then we're gonna make a lasagna. Because we didn't say that. But I thought for sure, you know, he said, so I'll run out of things to say. So I'm like, okay, let's make a lasagna. I make a lasagna, do a little pasta lasagna, and then I cheat the back. You might catch with lasagna. You gotta chase me in the pan, but I'm gonna take the pan down to the bottom of the mountain. And then you gotta chase me down the mountain, and you gotta make lasagna, and chase me up the mountain, and then you gotta go down the pan, right? Then we're gonna make spaghetti meatballs. And then we're gonna make tortellini, and then we're gonna make tortellini, and then we're gonna make tortellini, and then we're gonna make and I just kept making up pasta and chasing each other with pasta, you know, and I just kept going and going and going and going. And I was like, this is a fun character, I like this, and this is fun. And he didn't say stop, so I'm gonna keep going. And I heard, stop talking. Cut. There's no more tape, thank you, we'll be in touch. Apparently, I talked for a half an hour for one of these 30 minute cassette things, and he goes, you know, I'll be in touch, which to an actor means, there's the door, goodbye, you know? And so I went back to the beach, I saw the sunset, he gets on the phone, he calls Nintendo, I found on Mario, I got him, and he only sent my tape up there, and that was 29 glorious, happy years ago. I have no idea what I have to do. Some of an answer. You know what? That was perfect. That was perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hi. Okay, so it's an honor. I was just wondering, was there really any difference working with Ubisoft on the Rabbids game versus just working with Nintendo proper? Everyone I work with is so wonderful. They're so kind, so loving. And then the beautiful thing is Ubisoft, Nintendo, uh, and I think Bethesda, I think everyone that I have had the privilege of working with, everybody there loves video games. They have a passion and a joy from doing the best they can possibly do. I, I tell this story like, yeah, this is what I heard, I, I, I think it's true that you know Super Mario Galaxy came out and 
people had so much fun making the game that they kept making planets with other pieces of gravity and other little ideas in there. And Mr. Miyamoto said, well, since we're having fun, Let's go, you know, and they made Galaxy Two. So that's what that's my exposure to things is is pure love and pure joy. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you very much. Hi there. Hello, sir. How are you? So my question is, what do you think Luigi would say to anyone who's having a hard time? Because I know Luigi is all about facing his fear. Yes, he'd say, "You're number one. You can do it." <laughs> You know, and that is the thing about life, isn't it? There, there, you know, you, life gets better. It really does. And, 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 you know, we all have the ups and downs and ups and downs. And, you know, I think th there's a, you know, when you're in the middle of the cloud, sometimes all you can see is the cloud. And, but when you can start taking your power back, caring enough for yourself and loving yourself enough to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is my life and you take your power back, you can actually see more crisply. You can actually feel a, a more awareness and more clarity. And I, I really believe in that. We are so much more powerful than we think we are. But that little negative voice, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, no, no, I don't. Yeah, man, 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 man. <laughs> you know, that, you know, that voice is really terrified and, 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 and lonely and scared and angry. But when you take, recognize your own magnificence, when you're your own best friend and you say, I can do this, I can do this, you, you will, you will. Thank you Thank so you much. very it's much. Such an honor. Thank you, and I hope whatever, oh, hello, hi. What's your favorite um, Mario game of all the Mario games? Wow, what's my favorite Mario game of all the Mario games? Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I love Mario 64. That's one of the things I started to say. Because I had done, and that was part of that question, that, that, that thank you, but, um, I had done Mario Live for five years. You know, and just like, you know, I would see people walking by and say, hello, oh, look at that, what a beautiful dress you have on, you know. And that would start a conversation. And then one day, five years after learning this and decide, making decisions about the character, like I want him to be completely positive and loving and caring, and I don't want the word no to be in his dialogue. You know, it's like, no, no, I don't, I don't want that. I want, well, and then explain, because no is such an easy to use word, but it's not the one that makes us think and feel and be the most present. So I, you know, working, working, working on this character, and then one day I got a phone call, Mr. Miyamoto would like you to be in a Mario game. And I was like, yippee! So that game has a certain something because we had to invent, we had never done these things in recording, like spaghetti, ravioli, you know, these little things we got to do. But I also love Odyssey, you know, Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Galaxy. I had goosebumps the first time I saw that. And Super Mario 3D World, you know, every time it's like, come and play in our sandbox. We're going to have fun. And we really do. So thank you for that question. Thank you. And thank you very much. Yay. Hi. Hi. Let's see. There we go. All right. Uh, I was just wondering, is there a character from a different franchise who would love to voice anyone that you saw that would say, oh, I can do that, or? No. Nope. No? Nope. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, I look at life as, as the, the glass is a lot more than half full. I, my life is so full of joy. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time, I don't audition for things anymore because I, you know, in general, I just, there, there are so many young people that are out there working and, and I have the work that I absolutely love. And, you know, to me, there's a huge responsibility. I told my agents years ago, I, I was not gonna do any more voiceover or any character on, on video or film that uses obscenities or swears or does things. I, I take, I take, uh, the responsibilities of being a celebrity in whatever capacity I am, extremely seriously, you know? And I, I think you do have a responsibility because the first thing you learn as an adult and the thing that, that makes you an adult beyond your chronological years is to be aware that what you do and say and feel has an impact in the world. And so for me, it's like, I don't want to be like known as that. Everybody goes, oh my gosh, that's Mario. Mario doing the voice of somebody. Yeah, 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 you know? And they're like, oh my goodness, wait a minute. It would become less real and less true what I do. 
because I believe in in love and joy and passion and you know romance and however the crazy little world stars are. I believe in that. So I and I, I stick with that. But but thank you. That's a that's a lovely thank question. You. Thank you. Hello. Don't you look fabulous? Yes, thank you. The hardest voice acting job I've ever done. <laughs> I've never had a hard job. <laughs> They're all pretty easy. You know, because it's like a carpenter trains you know, how to use a nail gun or a hammer. That's what I do. I used to love to make my mom laugh. I, you know, I, we, we had this Jackie Gleason show, and there was a guy, Hey, you Jew. Hey, little you, Mr. Donahue. And I would do that, and my mom would crack up. You know, so I started falling in love with funny voices, even though I thought in my delusional mind I was going to be a lawyer. You know, the party the first part, and the suing the party the second part. And I, you know, you know, and, and it turns out, I'm, and I end up to be, Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's never been hard. It's always been fun. The only time I've ever had to do it is I, I'm seeking my little memory banks. And I've done several thousand jobs. Um, I remember one time I was doing a commercial and I couldn't, it couldn't get it the way I felt it was right. And the reason I couldn't is because I have this little vision outside of myself of what I thought it should be. I wasn't in the character, and acting is like chasing a ball on the beach for a dog. He's in heaven, and all he wants to do or she wants to do is get the ball and bring it back, and get the ball, and bring it back. Throw in the ocean, I'm gonna get the ball. Throw in the sand, I'm gonna get the ball. That's what acting is, is becoming in that moment exactly what you're doing. So you train and train and train and learn all this stuff. And then you throw it all away, and you get the ball on the beach. And you know, uh, I, 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 doing advertising, if I don't believe in a product, I have a hard time, you know. You know. So, so buy milk. It, Build strong bones every day, you know, you know, and, you know, and it's like, well, you know, milk is kind of like it does for gay mucus, and you know, we're not really sure. A lot of people don't really, it's not really good for people, and I, I got a friend that's lactose intolerant. Buy milk, it, but you know, it's like, so I, I, you know, I couldn't be genuine, you, you know, and I, and, and I could tell that I wasn't being genuine, and, and that was the hardest part for me was not being able to just surrender and become the dog chasing the ball on the beach. But life is that way too. When you want to love somebody, love. You know, or if you want love for yourself, love. If you want, to, if you feel like there's not enough, give a little bit of yourself and, and, and feel what it's like to feel gratitude, you know, or remember gratitude, remember joy. And it brings back in because these are energies that generate and generate, you know? So yeah, oftentimes you have to uh, give when you want to receive. <laughs> you know, it's a weird thing about life. But so for me, that was the hardest thing, was uh, uh, not realizing that I needed to just let go. Thank you very much. Thank you. But aside as acting, like it's all really fun. <laughs> Drink lots of water, you know, so you don't bother your throat. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> 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 um, Wario, he had like a very inconsistent voice over the years. Oh. Was there ever like a, like it sounded a little high, sometimes it sounded low? You ever had like a preferred voice? I've never heard this before, so I don't know. I like the Mario guy, I mean, Mario Gold. I think that was a lot of fun. I love that, you know, there he is, like, oh, here I go. Oh, I did this all myself. <laughs> You know, that, that to me is just like, it's just a dynamic, beautiful little uh, character. And I love Mario. Okay, um, that's it, thanks. <laughs> hey, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So two questions. Sure. Um, one, what's your opinion on, on Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually, I used to, I used to, say, I, I used to call him Chronic. You know, and then I said things like, you know, it was a little blue furball that Yoshi brought in. You know, I used to joke around like that. But then I saw the, I started doing the Olympic Games. And I love the Olympic Games. I think they're just, there's so much fun. There's so much joy. And I love the little rivalry. So I, I love it, you know. 
What's not to love? I do think that even though he appears to be faster, Mario actually is faster than Sonic. I'm just saying. And I think Princess Peach can do a hurdle like nobody else allowed. So the second question. Jordan. Are you hoping they bring back um, missing Nintendo characters from the past and future Mario games? Well, that's a lovely question. You know, I, I, I'm the dog on the beach chasing the ball. I don't know anything about making video games. I don't know. I do know that, you know, every time they make a game, it's like three, four, five, and more years in the creation between the, the concept and the animation, the drawing, the graphics, the design, the creation of the world, the creation of the internal world, the three dimensions now. It's years in the making. And then they phone me up and they say, come play in the sandbox. I go, woo, and I go play for four hours, four hour sessions, two or three or four of them. And you know, that's, that's what I do. So that's what I know. And that's what I, you know, it's, it, it, when I walk in the door and I see the animation, I go, oh, oh boy, he's in this game. That's, my, that's the extent of it for me. But I hope that every fan is absolutely thrilled every time. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. How many characters have you voiced? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I did Mario, Mario, Luigi, Wild Luigi, Baby Mario, Baby Luigi. I did Donkey Kong for a while. I did Toad once. I did some, some Yoshi voice, but I don't know whether that ended up in the game. I've done probably 200 video games outside the Mario franchise from the old days. I did a whole bunch of the Star Wars games. I did 14 voices in the Star Wars game. I did Lord of the Rings, like, you know, Parfanax, like, what brings you to the throne of the world? You know, and I did a whole bunch of things. You know, I just, I, 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 I <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Yeah, doing 14 voices in one game, that was a boot. Hello. Hi! Hello. Nice hat, bro. Thank you. Okay, so I had a question about Waluigi. Wow. So hey. if he were to somehow get his own game, <laughs> hint, hint. <Yeah. laughs> uh, what do you think the plot would be for it? A plot? Oh boy. See, once again, I don't know. I'm, if, if I tell you a plot and they ended up using it, you'd be like this. Because I don't know anything about this. I, 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 it, I actually, I was doing an interview in London. Uh, this is like 15 years ago. And, ooh, five minutes left, so I'll be fast on this one. Thank you. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, someone said, any new projects you were working on? And I said, yes, I'm writing my autobiography, thinking that that would motivate me to actually sit down and write my autobiography. Because I have such a wonderful life, I want to tell the world, be happy, yippee, you know? And I, and I so I'm, yay, I'm gonna write this book. I sit down and go, oh, and then in the beginning, there was me, wah, 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 you know, and I have, uh, Oh look, a butterfly. You know? <laughs> and then that was it, you know, a year later. When is that autobiography coming out? Oh, and then I was one year old and I said, oh look, a cow, you know, <laughs> you know. I'm not the person that can do anything in it, but, but I think that Waluigi will be very happy anytime he's in the game because he gets to cheat a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hello. Hi. Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, what is um, your thoughts on the, um, they announced like a um, Super Mario movie made by Illumination. Oh yeah. And um, I'm just a little curious that if you know any of the cast or um, if you're going to do the voice for Mario and... I know absolutely nothing <laughs> until it's announced. That's when I know everything, just like everybody else. It's the wonderful thing about being me. I'm just sitting there playing with a ball on the beach, and when, it, and when someone says, fetch, I go get it, you know? But I, I, of course, I would love to do it. It would be a tremendous honor and a tremendous joy. And I support Nintendo. I, I, I love Nintendo, so I hope I Thank see you. you in there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Um, I have a question. Um, so you were talking about Galaxy, Galaxy 2, um, 3D World, 64 Odyssey, but what are your thoughts on Sunshine? I love Mario Sunshine. I, you know, to me that was, that was a hallmark in my career. That was 2001 that came out, and that's when they called me to come to Australia to do promotional work for that. And I get on the plane, I fly to Australia, first time I've ever been there, and I completely lost my voice. <laughs> And I've got 52 interviews set up, and I'm like, hey, uh. 
you know? And, and luckily I had planned a week's vacation afterwards. So everybody slid the uh, interviews to the next week and I could, you know, but I became fast friends with, with a guy named David Yarn. It was just a, a dream of a... Uh, I, don't worry, you, you, you're getting better. I, I can hear your voice, you're sounding better already. And I'm like, I don't think so. You know, so I, you know, it was, an, and it's a great day. And did you know that Professor Egad, who made the Poltergeist 5000, is also the guy that made Professor Flood, which is another reason I like science. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi there. Oh, we just, we got, I'll go really, 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 really fast, okay? Really super fast. Hi. Um, have you voiced any of the characters in a Mario animated series? Not yet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm working fast. Can I what? Can you What's that? Like, like my mark? Like, 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 like the flying, right? Hey, the letter T. Yeah, I can do L. If you, have, uh, if you do play some, uh, Smash or Mario Kart, who's your main vote? Oh, I, I, I am so terrible at Smash. I don't know what's happening, but I, this is the pose that I do. <laughs> I see myself in that bubble more often than I see myself. But again, I'm pushing all the buttons like this. I might as well be looking at the controller because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Mario Kart, I, I always play as Mario. You know, because I mean, cause if you, uh, I, I'm playing, I'm like, whoa, 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 I, 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's another story. Thank you. Okay, really fast, I'll keep really fast. I have two questions. Okay. The first one is, um, aside from the Mario games, what are some other Nintendo games? I love Kirby, and I love Kirby. Kirby, he's so great, you know? And the other question that um, I'm asking in honor of my friends who are too much of cowards to come up here <laughs> is um, they're asking about your toad impression, or your toad voice. I couldn't even remember. I mean, that was 19, that was 1996. I can't remember. I, can't, I, can't, I really can't remember. I can remember Donkey Kong was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, here we go. You know, that, that was my Donkey Kong. I can't remember toad. <laughs> it wasn't quack quack. Thank you. Okay, yeah, really, really, two more questions really have to go really fast. Do you think Luigi will ever survive until the release of Smash Bros? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm watching too. I don't know. I have a feeling Luigi's got some good things in store. Yeah, thank you. Hi. So in the new trailer, it shows that Toadette picks up the crown and she turns into Peach. So do you think that Peach could be a toad? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 